All right, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Vahid. How are you? Joe, my name is Vahid Chitsos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Uh, it's very, very exciting to be here with you, man. Uh, you guys are doing exciting things in your office, so I'm going to have you share a little bit. But before we start, uh, introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in from. Hi, everybody. My name is Joseph. I'm coming from uh, Lake Forest, California. That's near Irvine. And I am a real estate agent, and I work in uh, Brea, California with uh, Present Financials. Uh, my broker is uh, Sina Zari, uh, at CEO Accredited. And he's, uh, I have had the chance to get to work with him. And also, he has shared with me his knowledge and skills and techniques as to how to become a better realtor. And so for me, it's been really good to actually go out there and meet people, but also for me to utilize the skills that I have gained from, you know, Think and Grow Rich and from other books that, you know what, you're gonna fail, but you know what, you're gonna grow. So I'm very excited. I know you just got your license. You posted it on Instagram. I was very, very excited that you got now you're certified. Now you can help uh, a lot of families buy their home or their houses or, or, or any real estate needs. But beside that, here's here's what I want to I want to share with the audience because I got the opportunity to meet with you in your office and and have a little bit of a chance to kind of get to know you. You come from a very diverse background, so I want to know two things. I know you have teaching background. So what was the number? What was the best experience as a teacher? And what was the worst experience as a teacher? Give us that because I think a lot of people, you know, we all respect teachers on a different level because everything that we learn, most probably you had a teacher or a mentor that taught you. Now I'm talking about academic schooling, so it must have been a teacher, and we're always indebted with them because they, they taught us everything. So I'm, I'm very grateful for them. But nobody becomes a teacher because of the money. They do yeah. it because they love it. Right, because the money is not that much, which is pretty sad. We should yeah. be paying the most amount of money to the teachers so they could teach the best and the best of the, the best of them to bring in the, the most amazing content for the students. But I want to hear your experience. So my experience was kind of uh, random because I went to Ch I was I lived in China, and for me, I didn't expect to go into the teaching field. So when I got into the teaching field, it was, uh, you know, very nerve wracking. And so basically my worst experience was my first teaching job because, you know, <laughs> because I had to teach little children, you know, English, you know, vocabulary, you know, how to have fun, how to keep their focus. And so for me, it was not easy. So that was the worst experience. But, you know, it, as time went on, it the the experience became more easier for me to teach. From there, I went and I taught uh, high school kids chemistry, which allowed me to become more, uh, allowed me to become more experienced and to have more confidence in myself to teach everyone how to, you know, teach everyone chemistry, but also how to have confidence in themselves. Because when you have confidence in yourself, then the students believe in yourself, believe in them. And uh, for me, I, when I made a small mistake, I lost a little bit of confidence. But at the end, they all started believing me and trusting me because I have built that confidence and experience. And so for me, I realized that you have to put the time, the effort, the energy, the, the planning to have a great class. And... As time goes on, I learned to become more mature, learned to become think better thinker, to become, uh, you know, more independent and to do things for myself rather than relying on somebody else. So, you know, with that 100%. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, let's move past forward. What are two things that you have learned from thinking Grow Rich that you could share with us today that you think potentially could help us? So I read Think and Grow Rich at least two or three times in my lifetime. I'm 29 right now, 29 years old. And I think th what I learned was that, you know, first of all, there's, there's the golden rules. I call them golden rules because they're golden. They were valid in, you know, the early, early 1900s and they're still valid now. So 
so what I think is, first of all, you have to have a goal. You have to set that goal. And you have to know what it is precisely in order to take action. And so, and then the second thing is to actually take action on your goal because people, they don't, they're afraid to take that step because they never entered into chartered territory that they never entered into before. And so for me, it was uh, very challenging because I never, I had the goal, but I never took action. So what was the point of reading the book or point of reading or having a goal? So for me, I realized that I needed to take action uh, because I am a comfortable person. I like to be comfortable in my you know, actions, my habits, my daily life. I don't want to change it because it's not fun. But once I started changing my attitude and thinking, I, I, I started taking action because I realized that my life is short. I only have one life and that I'm not a cat. I don't have nine lives. So, <laughs> so for me, I really needed to take action. And uh, thinking Grow Rich, you really must take action in order to grow. And, you know, the best thing about... Uh, you know, the author is that he, he learned from the best. So we must learn from the best. And there's people out there that are great that taught us how to grow. And so that's I why. I, I think one of the biggest and the most important things that I have learned in my lifetime uh, so far has been that you do need a mentor. And it's not just one person. It could be multiple individuals that are great at what you want to do. And this is the confusing part for me, Joseph. A lot of times people have mentors, but their mentors are not doing what they want to be able to do in, in their future. And what I mean is by this is what Tony Robbins also talks about is modeling. You got to find somebody who is where you want to be in the future or you're striving to be or become. And then you take that person, you study them, you, you get mentorship by them, you get close to them, you get in their inner circles, you try to be you know, creative in providing value for them so they could teach you. So there's so many different, it's being resourceful. If you're not being resourceful, you're not going to be able to do it. And I tell you this plan, Joseph, you're going to love this, man. All I right. haven't shared this on a live uh, interview yet. So the other day I, was, I, I met somebody. And this individual moved from a different state, came to California. Uh, there is practically no family. He doesn't know anybody. And he's just going from one job to another, uh, most of them being in, in labor work where he provides a service and he makes money. Nicest yeah. guy you probably will be, right? Yeah. So I looked at him. I said, how come you're not being resourceful? You know, you want to make three, $4,000 a month. How come you're not being resourceful? And he looked at me and goes, what do you mean? I said, have you ever read the book Thinking Grow Rich? He goes, no. I said, well, you know what? We, come to my office when you get a chance. I'll give you a copy of it. I don't have it. I ordered new ones. I'll, gi I'll give you a copy. You need to read this book. You don't even have to go buy it. I'll give you a copy. So I said, let me explain to you what I mean by being resourceful. I said, do you have three, four hundred bucks in your pocket? Is, is that, uh, do you have three, four hundred dollars? And he's all like, yeah. I said, let me ask you a question. You ever heard of a company called Uber? He's like, yeah. I said, let me ask you a question. Aren't you tired of getting hired and fired and let go because they find somebody else cheaper than you or somebody else closer to that job than you and you have to travel and because you don't have a transportation, you get there late. That's why they want to let you go. They want to find someone. He's like, yeah. I said, let me ask you a question. Why don't you go rent a car for $200 a week? You do about 120 to 150 rides every single week. The car is paid off. The Uber will pay for your car. I don't know the whole details of the program, but that's what I understood, right? And yeah. I said, so if you make $500 per week, you deduct the 200, it covers the insurance already, right? So you have $300 left for other expenses. And that's only working like four or five days, right? You still have two of the days. I said, now those two days need to be utilized for what you want to do in your life for your career. So five days you work, to be able to have those two days freedom so you could do what you want to do to yourself and learn a new skills, new knowledge, new certification, license, whatever you want to do, right? So I said, has that come to your mind? And he's like, no, I never thought about it like that. I said, it's not the idea that I give you. I'm, I'm giving you the idea so you start thinking how I would do it 
and how I would be resourceful with literally not having much, but you can create it out of your thoughts. I said, the reason why you're in this mess and you don't like where you at is because of the thought patterns that you have, the vibrations that you have and the vibrations that you're receiving. I said, if you change those, your life is going to change. Now, we don't promise you, nobody guarantees you that it's going to change overnight. It will uh -huh. take two to probably six months, maybe a year of constant discipline to be able to do, to be resourceful on a constant basis and be able to do that. And I said, listen, let's say you were butt naked and you had no money, like zero. I'm talking about you didn't even have one dog. I said, if you would have came up to me with that idea and any entrepreneur would do this, if you had a written plan on what you were going to do and what was your, your, your step one to step 10, and you said, I'm going to go to this Uber. I'm going to apply for this. I'm going to do this. This is my plan. I did my research. This is how much money I'm going to make. This is how much my gas is going to cost. This is how much time is going to take. This is exactly yeah. what I'm going to do. These are the areas I want to go in. Do all of that. And I said, it would have been a one-page printout that you could have just done on your phone. If you would have brought that to, brought that to me, I would have let you borrow 500 bucks. Because now, as an entrepreneur, as a businessman, I'm taking a risk on you, but it's a calculated risk because I know you've done your homework. So even if you had no money, still people will lend you more, borrow money and you'll be able to pay them back because you had a plan and you itemized it. I have not had that many people that came to me with a plan like that. And if you're the first one or the second one, I'm going to jump on it. I'm going to say, you know what? I want to be in business with this guy. One day this guy is going to do great things because he's resourceful. So literally a lot of people are just being handicapped, meaning they're not winning for their lives because they're not thinking outside the box and they're not putting this, which goes back to what you just said, action, brother. You hit it and then, I mean, you just went for the juggler. You just went for the, you just cut it right there. Like, action, man. So you don't have to read 200 pages. It's just all about action. Yeah, and I think a lot of people that get stuck in those, you know, quotes and reading the books and stuff like that, it's all good and fine, you know, because we should be growing to expand our knowledge. And though, but people, they don't take the, the second step, which is action. So if you're not going to take action, why should you read? I read a lot of books and I love reading books. I'm a book nerd. But at the same time, but several years ago, I never took action. And that was what was wasting my time and effort because I never took action. I failed. I took action and I failed a lot. I failed in the stock market. I failed in investing in some people. I failed in some, you know, you know, small transactions here and there. And you know what? It ate up and it hurt me a lot. But guess what? I became a better person because I took some action, calculated risk, if you want to say. And then I realized, you know what? I was not experienced, but I took action. But right now I'm 29 and I'm pretty sure if I keep taking more risk in my life, then guess what? I'm pretty sure that I'm going to gain more experience, more wealth, more, you know, knowledge about everything that's going to happen in my life. And so this is the part that we all have to take is that we have to take action for our, you know, for our future because if we're not resourceful. We, there's right now we're in 2019. We're the we're the era of internet. We're the era of you know rapid growth, and things are going to grow so dramatically to the point that we're not going to be able to catch up. I, I think for even your the heat, you're a young guy. I think in five years you're not going to be able to handle all the technology that is happening. You know, oh, really, so, man. It's moving fast. No, no, I'm serious. Like little, literally, I'm 29, and I'm like, how the hell do you do? Alexa dot, you know, like, I don't even know how to do that stuff. So for me, what I'm saying is that in five years, we're going to have AI, AR, you know, we're going to have a lot of things that's going to be coming that we don't know. We don't know what's going to be happening. We're not going to be able to catch up because things are growing rapidly. But it all started from a seed. Today I was watching, I saw a picture. Uh, I saw, you know, they, basically it was a picture of a humongous tree enormous tree you know it had so many branches it had you know it could cover a great length and basically it can hold like 400 people under it you know and he said you know what it all starts with one seed one seed one tiny seed so what does that mean is that when you start with one seed you can cover it eventually grows to the point 
that it can cover for it can sit under 400 people that's a lot that's an enormous tree so what i'm saying is that you know if you look at everybody else that you know companies or individuals uh you know they started with something they failed but they started with an idea and they grew that idea and they grew I have a question about that joseph you said failed so i'm i'm having a little bit of a vocabulary challenge so if i went and i tried something and my results are not there does that mean my results are not what i expected to get in return for the amount of labor and time and energy that i put in would you call that failing because to me it was just that the results weren't there that it could equal it the amount of energy that i put inside did not equal the amount of results that i got but is that considered failing to me i look at it as i need to do adjustment i need to do refinement or sometimes i need to put on the emergency brake and just step back for a moment and observe from an outsider to see what's going on inside because sometimes we get into our own bubble and we don't we don't see anything outside and we're like gun blazing thinking that we're on the right path and we want to prove that we're on the right path not knowing that the initial initial planning might have been fault or the initial planning might have needed more more refining so now we're trying to go for 5 years to prove something that initially would have not been correct so to me i don't look at it as a failure i look at it as here we might call it a failure or or down the line we might call it as an experience so did i actually fail or my results didn't match the effort that i put in so it's a little bit of a vocabulary you know i might use it like that but i know what it means we have to attach the right meaning to the right words i have not failed in my life but what i have done is i have made a lot of mistakes and i didn't do adjustments but as long as i don't give up i don't consider that failing correct and i agree with you and i think what happened is that i called the failure but in reality it's not failure it's called the learning experience and making refinement adjustments in order to improve myself because what everybody's out there to take something from somebody but if you learn how to you know let me give you an example so for example i had somebody approach me somebody uh 2 3 years ago you know saying hey you know the stock market is going to go up it's going to explode and i can make you a ton of money in one week you know so guess what i did i went and i jumped in i dumped in i gave her a couple thousand dollars you know thousands of dollars that yeah that was a lot it, and it's it was at that time i really needed it but guess what i jumped in and i believed into it and basically she you know she put in her machine and basically she forgot it and guess what happened i lost it all i lost it all in one week literally one week so what i'm saying is that yeah investing investing is not it's not dangerous if you only know it so Joseph, me, i need to know a couple of thousand dollars would have been a couple of 100,000 dollars i promise you you would have been a millionaire right now the 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 bigger the pain the harder the more it hurts you the it gives you a bigger lesson you will never touch that ever again or if you do now this time you're going to become the best expert in in that example would have been in stock market but sometimes i tell people if you're going to fail don't fail with couple of thousand man fail like so big that people are like man you went through that and you came out and that's an experience that you can share with a lot of people and that hopefully would inspire a lot of people not to do the same thing but again joseph but that 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 You shouldn't be complaining about failure. I don't want to hear that from you. I don't want to hear that from you. Bunch of kids running around talking about failure. 29. Man, you're so young. God damn. Like you well, know how many to my brother, man, he failed three times. He three he failed three businesses before 29 years old, man. Good. Good for him. Good for him. Now now he could he could probably make it big and he could talk about it. Listen, no, no, he, is, this- he is. He he felt a lot and he's doing very good now, thankfully. I appreciate you taking this time and being with us today. I congratulate you on getting your license, brother. Many, many Thanks. more successes for you down the line. Definitely say my 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 hello to to brother Sina over there. He's killing it at presidential. 
the president, the president financial over there. He's killing it out. And I know he did an interview. So tell him that I know that he did an interview with Gary Cardone. Tell him that he was watching it. Don't think I didn't notice it. I, I'm watching everything. I got it under my radar. So thank you so much for being here, Joseph. Take care, brother. I will. Take care, Benit. It was nice chatting with you. Oh.